on October 18th, I had the great pleasure of trying out Farming Simulator 25 with 20 other content creators in Rafine, Wisconsin. I departed to Sleepy Valley in the late afternoon of the 17th, a bit anxious, being my first flight in 23 years. What a sight coming into Chicago in the early evening, just after sunset. And then a sunrise breakfast on the shores of Lake Michigan. Hello, Wisconsin. And then it's a quick and bumpy bus ride to the Case Experience Center in Racine, Wisconsin. So, uh, are you guys excited? Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me one, one thing. My, my little thing. You win. Yeah. So I take one, two, three, and we all you win. One, two, three, you win! <laughs> all right, let's go. And it's time to pick those all important badges up. We still aren't really sure what exactly is going to go on today, but we did see a whole lot of big machinery parked out front. And it was at this point when we learn what is really going to happen today. One, we're going to get 90 minutes to play Farming Simulator 25 and record our experiences. Two, we're going to get a plant tour of the Magnum case plant. And three, we're going to get the experience to drive some wonderful Case IH vehicles. Now for the day, we were split up into four different groups five creators each. I had the privilege of being in the first group that got to play Farming Simulator 25. Meanwhile, another group went on the factory tour. Another group had a great opportunity to drive some fabulous vehicles. And then the fourth group, well, they had a time to tour the museum. After about an hour and a half, we all got to rotate. So at the end of the day, we've all been able to experience everything that Case IH and Giants had to offer. Giants had put together these slides for all the creators that were there, so I thought I would put them up here in my group. We had, of course, myself, DJ Gohan, Farmer Cop, The farm sim guy. And clutch simulations. Other creators in alphabetical order. 4B Gaming. Z Gaming Austin Farmer Connect Modding Driver 53 Jababo aka Jabs
Misty Meow. Mr. Sealy P. Sparks. The Squad. Tony Myth. Ultrasaurus. Virtual Farmer. X Man, nineteen seventy one. Last but not least, Yosho Hin. And of course, a huge shout out to Giant Software. We've got Boris, head of publishing here. Kermit, our North American community coordinator for Giant Software, seen here on the right. And then Nicholas from the Chicago Giants office, your customer service representative. Fabulous individual. Now, I would be lying if I didn't tell you that the day wasn't all about fun and games, because quite honestly, it was. But we did get to tour the Magnum factory in Racine, Wisconsin. We couldn't take any videos or images of the factory, but Case did provide us this. So we spent the day here at the Racine plant. The building in the foreground is the Case Experience Center, and the building in the foreground is the Magnum plant. Now we got a chance to tour the Magnum plant, and in this facility, they produce from start to finish Case IH Magnum tractors. At the same time, they're also producing on the same lines New Holland T7 tractors. You can literally see a Case tractor, and then right behind it, you can see a EU spec New Holland tractor, and then right behind that, you might have a South American spec case tractor. It just interchanges back and forth. I'll tell you one thing, seeing the transmissions on these tractors gives me a whole new world of respect for how complex the machinery in these vehicles truly are. And the scale of the machinery, the heavy duty nature of all of this stuff is just absolutely truly amazing. There's tons of milling machines on the plant floor, and they've got hundreds of tools in those milling machines, and they're gonna be milling cast iron blocks, basically, into completed casings to then put things like gears into, transmissions, axles, and that's what we can see right here. Those were the cast iron casings. And then right down the line, they're building the cabs, they're putting wheels on things, they're marrying the cabs and the chassis together. And then, well, it goes on a little bit of a shakedown, literally.
Now I want to pause the video right here. You see that nice green lawn there in front? <laughs> well, we're about to tear that thing up. Actually, we didn't tear it up all that bad. But that's exactly where we're going to be driving our harvesters, our quad track, our Magnum, and our New Holland T7. What a great experience to get in these massive machines, learn from the experts how to use the machines, information about how they're built. It was just an all around fabulous experience. Did you ever play soccer with a backhoe? We did. How about driving a massive 715 case quad track? Yep, check that off the list. Seventy two fifty axle flow harvester. Yep, punch that ticket. Or maybe a new Holland T8 with duels all around. And then finally, a Magnum. So let's address realistic ground deformation. What we can see here tracks of the quad track, the harvester, the magnum, the T8, everything. 20 of us took turns driving this stuff all around the front yard all day long. And this is what's left. Not too terrible bad I don't think. Is there any real question why I have issues with the extreme deformation that we've seen in 25 up to this point? And then to truly understand the company, one needs to know where they came from. So we took a tour of a museum. Now supposedly, the $525 price tag in 1932 would equate to $12,082 in today's money. Imagine if Henry Ford wasn't the one that won out, but instead it was Case. Now 1930, this thing says it cost $1,500 new. In today's money, that's a pretty steep $47,772.
I can see why I probably didn't catch on. A special Centennial Skin Case 1570. I believe the gentleman says only a hundred of these were painted this way. In 1976, this thing cost thirty thousand dollars. Today, hundred and sixty-six thousand. Not too bad. Now, did you know, if you looked at the 1986 service manual for the Magnum 7130, you were looking at this tractor. According to a gentleman that I talked to there, the entire service manual is this tractor. This tractor's been put together and disassembled so many times, and yet it still only has 100 engine hours. believed to be the oldest case IH Farmall McCormick Deering International Harvester still in existence, the 1924 case IH regular. $825 new in 1924. That equates out to $15,211 today. Now I believe there's a typo here on the placard because it says horsepower 195. That definitely can't be right given the fact that the PTO horsepower was a mere 30. And then we move on to the most modern piece of machinery here in the museum, the Case IH Autonomous Magnum Tractor from 2016. And then for those really into case history, we've got the timeline all the way from 1842 up to modern day 2020. 1842, Jerome Case arrives and invents the groundhog thresher, thresh out wheat grains from the chaff. 1904, Case introduced the first all steel threshing machine. 1939, 
International Harvester introduces the second generation Farmall, a letter series tractor. Series A and B are small sized, Series H a mid sized tractor, and Series M a large size. 1977 launches the Axle Flow Combine, revolutionizing the industry with its simplicity, grain quality, grain savings, crop adaptability, and mash capacity and an added resale value. And then in 2015, the Magnum Road Track was introduced. That's exactly what we drove earlier in the day. And let's go ahead and close out today learning a little bit about Abe, the Case IH Eagle mascot, with quite an interesting history. So there was a sales opportunity just before the Civil War and they were gathering people together to go fight. Um, all regiments were doing mascots and Chief got lucky because in the nearby cabin the Wisconsin regiment was having a fair amount of alcohol to get ready for Dutch courage, completely drunk, so they bought the eagle from the eagle and decided it was going to be their mascot. So they got lucky because a lot of other regiments had snakes, hedgehogs, gophers, <laughs> and they had a noble bird, which is a much better idea. So, uh, it cost them two hundred two dollars and fifty cents. They couldn't find the fifty cents, so the barkeep gave them fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> nice trick. So they named it Old Dave, obviously after Lincoln, because they were on that side of the fence. Now then, um, so they took the bird in the battle. As you can see here, this it had its own span, it had its own mind back. So wherever they went in the Civil War, the bird went with them. So they would release the bird, it would fly across the desert miles, reaching like crazy And don't put the fear of God into the opposition. Come back and stand it, you can take it and off it go. The Confederates hated that so much they actually put a price on the bird's head. It's a substantial amount of money. The only way they could shoot it. So they the birds survived the Civil War, went to as many battles, probably went through more battles than a lot of people. Um, yeah, the Confederate troops called it the Yankee Buzzard. Uh, the bird went through the moon and got in Yeah, there we go. Most of the famous ones, it's like that. So then it became a celebrity. So I think Kardashian. <laughs> and so he ended up um, being kept in the state building in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, the government decided to take him over, that was in 1964. Then he went on tour, he had his own entourage. They would take him out, and the guys loved it, then he went to travel all over the US. So that was pretty cool. And yeah, he went to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he went to the Republican Convention, there you go. Unfortunately, said Eagle then died of smoke inhalation at a fire at the Capitol building in Madison. So the Civil War didn't come to off, but a simple fire did. So they couldn't revive it. Poor Eagle died. So then they stopped. <laughs> and J.I. Case, um, Jerome Minkus Case, saw the eagle being paraded through Wisconsin and decided that was a very historic mark and something of nobility and would not look good on my tractors. So they adopted it as the company emblem for the AI case, which they held on to until 1969. That's, that's the last year they actually used the emblem. But the rest of what the eagle spawned after that was a bit more interesting. And I didn't know this, I had to research it. So, Old A is actually the, scream, the original screaming eagle from the 101st Airborne. So then it became a, a true military mascot, not just for the Wisconsin regiments. And of course, the original 1st Airborne is a pretty storied regiment in the American modern army. And there are statues of A all over the place. There are a lot in Madison, Wisconsin. There are a lot in the Kentucky home of the 101st Airborne. 
there is a panoramic diorama of the Eagle and its story in their headquarters, which I thought was kind of interesting. And there are monuments all over the place here, so yeah, quite the life, quite the life afterwards. Um, people still riding there, it's kind of interesting. And it's a much beloved symbol of the Jay trees. After a quick photo op, seriously, it's like herding cats. 20 creators in one space. A relaxing dinner amongst new friends. And then in the morning, we say goodbye to our international creators as we head off to the Chicago airport to come back to reality. I think Argzy just landed. Like four hours ago. Just a few quick shots of the Chicago skyline. Some Illinois farmland. And then some windmills and more farmland. We appear to have made it to West Virginia. I'm not really sure why I think this. I mean, the land's not flat anymore. That's one reason. And now we're back to the valley. On the return trip, I sat beside a gentleman from Southern California. He was rather intrigued with the green valley. Apparently it's rather brown out where he's from. He was flying in to uh, go down to North Carolina to do a little bit of storm recovery. So guys, I hope you all have enjoyed my spin on the whirlwind trip to Racine, Wisconsin to see Farming Simulator 25 tour the Magnum plant at Case IH, drive some wonderful, wonderful modern tractors and learn about the historic history of a fabulous company all centered around farmers. Now I look forward to Farming Simulator 25's launch in just a few short weeks. If you've not pre-ordered and you're interested in doing so, maybe after you've seen the pre-release gameplay, then please consider using my affiliate link. I've got a link down in the description below. If you order from the Giants eShop, you can pick up either the Standard Edition or the Standard Edition plus the Year 1 Season Pass. If you're a collector of physical things, well then maybe you'll want to take a look at the Collector's Edition that is available using my Amazon affiliate link, also in the description below. You're going to get the base game as well as lots of cool stickers, some posters, and the USB ignition switch, which I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. Those on console, you can also use the Amazon affiliate link to pick up a physical copy of the PlayStation 5 version of the game or the Xbox Series S or X version of the game. If you would be so kind, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. It does help with the overall discovery of the video and the channel itself. We're going to need a little bit of help trying to get our goal of 50,000 subs before Farming Simulator 25. I believe at this point we're about 500 short still. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, go ahead and click that bell as well. Once Farming Simulator 25 releases, we're going to have a flurry of content from how-to videos, informational live streams, and map guides. I look forward to your comments down in the comments section. And until next time, happy farming.